or funny children. How old are they? Their names? My Lily is six and my little William is, uh, I shouldn't call them mine, but because you're only a curator, really, of a child. But uh, don't tell Sam, I, William is three, okay? But that changed me. We were living in Paris. I mean, we've lived all over the world. The question of who they were, where they came from, was present. I had that thought. It motivated us to get on a plane and go to Broome. I had already had the passion to make reinvent sort of sweeping romantic epic, which seemed like a simple idea at the time. It's been four years since then, and I finished the film three weeks ago. Not a second, not a day. There is no weekend. There is no this or that. There's only the film and life intertwined. And so that took four years. And, you know, if someone hands you a text, and I'm not in any way diminishing the task of directing a pre-existing text, but the idea has been thought of, the text has been developed, there is a budget. And if it's, if, if it's in the current vernacular, I mean, if it's, a, if it's James Bond, which, by the way, is terrific, and I'd love to do a James Bond, I keep thinking, oh, wouldn't that be fun? But, you know, um, and a lot of work, but, but the vernacular is there. Even the way to sell it is there. So you don't, probably don't have to be involved that much in that part. So four years, and I don't think I've made anything. Uh, maybe I made, I don't know, Moulin Rouge was that long. I mean, it, it takes, as once you, can, for me, once I commit, it takes as long as it takes. And by the way, three weeks ago, I was in a soundstage in Sydney. And really, I, I, the films cross a line. They're technically working. But I could, there's no film I've made that I don't think I could go, but I could, you know, I could, you don't finish them. They get taken away from you, you know? Good answer. Does it, does it help, just before we, we pass on, does it help? I know you said it was obsessive for, you know, four years, day, yeah. night. We, does it help that your wife, your partner is also involved as, as the designer? Well, and the it, it, it totally helps, but I have to, I don't know much about my own character. My whole life's about everybody else's. But there are a few you get to a certain age and you start to see some telltale signs. And certainly one of them is that I now realize that almost every relationship I've ever had has been creative. I met that person through creativity. From my best friend, Craig Pierce, who I met at high school, who I've written three screenplays to, to CM, my wife, who I met through production design. I went looking at drama school for a production designer because I had this theatre company. So it helps. But that's all I know. We're circus folk, you know? Like, we only know. It doesn't work. It's not unusual to us. You know, there isn't like, oh, right, five o'clock, we're finished, off we go. There's just the show. Or there's the film. Or the, there's the creative gesture. Yeah. There was a question from... Mike, you had the question from someone? Oh, we had to go... <laughs> That's how long your answers are. One His lunch break's any over. <laughs> no, any other questions? A, a gentleman here in the middle. Um, it was two, be two bearded gentlemen. You first, and then the one behind. Um, you were saying that you came from uh, a town with 11 houses, um, and now you're making... Can I coach you on mic technique a bit? Okay, to... okay down there. <laughs> I think everyone will see. Okay. It's a good question. Okay, so. you said you came from a town with 11 houses, and yeah. um, now you're making enormous films like yes. this. I mean, what film would you say was the one that gave you the break as a director? Well, I've only made four films, you know, and my first one was Strictly Ballroom. So, I mean, I can tell you something. No short films or anything like that? Or? No. <laughs> no, I, I... But, you know, that's not entirely true. When I was growing up, people say, when did you start doing what you're doing? I said, I've only ever done this. I can remember being in a, this gas station with 11 houses and going, oh, wouldn't it be good if, oh, I've got a chair and you drag that over here and the kids and blah, and, uh, uh, and, you know, next thing I'm Huggy Bear in, you know, Starsky and Hutch, you know, we're acting and out. My father was in the Vietnam War. He met my mother through photography. And it's funny because we lived in the middle of absolutely nowhere, but he was obsessed with education. So we did everything from... No, I've got the right mic. So you can probably not hear me. It sounds like we're in a bingo hall, really, doesn't it? 16, <laughs> legs 11. <laughs> anyway, my father, um, you know, he's quite mad, I now realise. He's not here anymore, so I won't be too unkind to him. But he, you know, everything. Like, we, 
ballroom dancing and singing and painting and commando training and boxing and, you know, growing, feeding the pigs and, you know, working on the gas station. And it was just relentless. We were sort of like the Renaissance players of Erin's Creek, you know. And out of that, though, came cinematic technique. Like he had a Bolex straight eight camera, not even 16, not super eight, straight eight, you know, a windy. And I made all my first films on a windy, you know, like, you know, it would be like, you know, you know, my brother, Chris Mandrake, the magician, watch his, you know, you know, watch, watch his, um, you know, moth collection disappear, you know, and, you know, gags like that, you know, here is his stamp album. And then, you know, we, you, it's a trick. You swap it for an album with no stamps in it and he tears it up. Yeah. So that's called a special effect. <laughs> And uh, have so I've still, always done it. Have you still got those films? Are they in a yeah, actually, the actually, they are somewhere, I think. I think probably somewhere, yeah. There's a great drama with my family. You know, they'll be in the archaeological dig somewhere, but they do exist. And I guess the point I'm making is I've always done it. And the only time I really got off track was when I changed my instinctive way of doing it. And really, that's what it was, you know. Now, Strictly Ballroom, by the way, that was a dramatic play. My, I, I was a ballroom dancer. Yes, it's true. I was at drama school. I was interested in primary Greek myth and how it could be universal. And the exercise was I was going to take something I knew really well and play it like the most important thing in the world. And it was the time of the Cold War. And believe it or not, Strictly Ballroom began out as a statement against the Cold War. And we took it with Drama School Festival, actually, to Czechoslovakia before Glasnost, right? And it, 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 we were like, you know, it was Ballroom dancing. And right in the middle of, of actually Strictly Ballroom, no one knows this, it was a bit Brechtian too, you know, so we'd stop in the middle of it and go, fuck the Federation. And there were tapes of Ronald Reagan sort of going, Semper 5. And, you know, there was this sort of underlying political undercurrent to really what was the gesture was oppression. The oppression of creativity, oppression of politics of life. There is only one way to cha-cha-cha. Interestingly, the folks in Czechoslovakia really got it. We won that student competition we got there and said what have we got to offer there was guys doing you know the seagull students going you know nina nina et vous, et vous. and if you've ever seen that russian acting pre glosnos it just blows your mind i mean it's so beautiful and powerful et vous. yeah and these kids however that audience were blown away by it because they saw the metaphor in strictly ballroom of someone telling you there is not only one way to cha-cha-cha. When it comes to art, if someone tells you there's a book or that they've got the knowledge, they can tell you exactly how it to be done. And as long as you stick to their rules and as long as you do it the way they determine it should be done, they can't really tell you what's in the book. But as long as you do that, you might get the prize. Right? No new steps, Scott. Right? Well, that's wrong. That's the black hole of creativity. Because you can learn how to mix paints, but what to paint? how to paint it, who you are in that painting, and what you are trying to communicate, that's something completely personal. They got that. Years later, cut to, I've got my own theatre company, blah, 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 I want to make a film. I meet this guy. He comes and says, I want to start a film company. He's got a band called ACDC. Perhaps you've heard of it, right? He said, I want to put the money from ACDC into a film. Why not one about boredom dancing? Well, that makes sense. Yes, I say, but I've got to direct it. Have you directed anything? No, no, no. Okay, all right. Off we go. Incredible journey. Unbelievable thing. Can't get financing. Go to Cannes. Schlep around in a really heavy suit. Never been to France before. You know, way overdressed for the summer. Please, please, you know, give money for my Strictly Ballroom. Get out of here, kid. You know, ballroom dancing. There was a girl in a bikini on the thing. And so this guy, I, I never even got to see Fox. There was a company called Fox Lorber, which I think made sort of porn films. And the guys in the middle of a party, no kidding, it was exactly like, you know, there was a chick sort of go-go dance kind of thing. There's a guy, okay, kid, give it to me. Yeah, yeah, okay, quite skimpy, I like it, yeah. Ballroom dancing, I don't think, get out of here, you know. I mean, I must have heard a million times, ballroom dancing will never be popular, you know. What was so great about this story? There's a tragic part to it, because the man with the ACDC, he died. Just on the day, he tricked the government into giving us one million dollars by loaning some distributor down in Canberra fifty thousand dollars. I'm not supposed to say this is completely. Uh, I'm too old to care. Anyway, so fifty thousand dollars, and then that meant that someone was investing and blah blah blah. Oh, we got a million dollars. I go to work. He died of a heart attack, and he was the most exquisite, beautiful human being. Film's over. <laughs>